Hi there. Today, I'm here with Joe Rutt in his studio. Inner this, Sanctum. This is where it all happens. All the magic happens here. Um, Joe's a fantastic singer, songwriter, guitar player. Um, I, I'll just give a little background of how I met him. You had been playing at the Starry Plow, and um, as usual, probably, I didn't have my camera there. And I saw you play, and I thought, oh my gosh, I should have my camera running. This guy's fantastic. And then the next time I finally did see you, you were at uh, Freight and Salvage at an open mic. And I said, okay, this time I'm going to get that guy. <laughs> and Is you, that when you got the Barbie Feet video? The Barbie oh, Feet right. yeah, video. Yeah. And that's just one of the coolest videos. Oh, yeah. that... um, I decided to sing this song instead because I, my friends, am a foot fetishist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love feet. I love toes. So, so we're going to do this one instead. <laughs> She wore high heels too long one day And when she went to take them off Found her feet were stuck that way Barbie feet, Barbie feet I got a girl with Barbie feet I never hear her coming now She tiptoed out the house <laughs> Off. Um, okay, where, where do you, uh, actually you just played at the Great American Music Hall, yes. releasing your latest uh, CD. Correct. And Joe Rutt Live. Joe Rutt Live. Cleverly titled. Which happened, what, about two years ago, is that right? Yeah, 2010. We recorded the CD at the Great American at the CD release party for the album prior to this one. And uh, yeah, yeah it was somehow... Uh, uh, 
somehow the CD release party became the new album. Uh, well, you, uh, you had set it all up. You had yeah. people come in with professional outboard recording gear. Right. Well, that was very last minute. That wasn't, that wasn't part of the plan originally in doing the show. That kind of fell together in the couple weeks before we did the show. And then like, you actually put together a, a, a video of a bunch of cell phone, well, mixed with other professional equipment, but a lot of right. people in the audience just kind of catching you playing. What was the name of that song again? Uh, that was My MySpace Friends Don't Love Me in the Real World. <laughs> uh, I'd like to ask you all a question. Did anybody come here because of my MySpace page? Okay. You have a MySpace page? I didn't think so. <laughs> that's, what, that's what this song is about. A special message to my MySpace friends But no one showed up to help me move My dishes were packed My boxes were stacked I even bought beer and pizza I scrolled through my memories But I could not recall a single time That I had ever before felt more ignored By a thousand close friends for asking look I gotta go now I can empathize with a busy day so when he didn't even shake my hand I just figured the poor boys nursing carpal tunnel from keeping up with all his MySpace friends cause my MySpace friends don't love me in the real world tell about Steve Lucky
Thanks, everybody. A lot of your stuff is, is very humor-based, but before we, we go into that, let's go back to uh, where's Joe Rutt from? What is a, if you put a bio out, what would, right. you, what would you say? What was uh, your early years? What were you doing in high school? Mo uh, I would say I'm from the San Joaquin Valley of, of California. Uh, uh, I grew up in a, a number of different places. If you could throw a rock at it from I-5, I probably lived there. Uh, <laughs> kind of like me. Yeah, you know, Bakersfield, Stockton, Marysville, Sacramento. When did you uh, start uh, pick, picking up uh, guitar, or, or when, when did you start listening to music seriously and thought, boy, I want to do that? Oh, well, I mean, I was always entranced by it. I mean, as, as a six, seven-year-old kid in Bakersfield, I lived down the street from this guy who uh, played the pedal steel, and I, I didn't know that's what the instrument was at the time. I, I never actually saw the instrument. I would just hear it as this guy was practicing, and I was always kind of entranced by that sound. And I, I, it didn't occur to me at, you know, seven years old or whatever that I could do that, but, I mean, I was certainly, I mean, sucked into it from a very early age. <laughs> So when did you start actually uh, playing guitar? You know, the first time I, th I think I ever touched an electric guitar uh, was at uh, some friends of my parents uh, had three kids. One of them was Jeff. He had a Fender Stratocaster. Uh, I must have been nine or ten years old, and like we would go to visit them, and uh, he would he would bust out this Fender Stratocaster. He was a few years older than me, and he played slide with a nine volt battery, and I thought that was the coolest thing I had ever heard, and uh, just, or, or seen really because I was like oh wow that's and there was something that clicked in my head that oh that's that sound back in Bakersfield that slidey sound uh -huh. uh, of the pedal steel guy that I'd been hearing um, it kind of clicked in my head that oh you slide something metallic on the string to make that sound and I still I mean it was still a decade or more before I realized that oh there's this whole contraption called a pedal steel and you've got all these levers and things that you bend to actually get that full sound but that was the first time I ever touched a guitar was a Stratocaster that this guy Jeff Johnson had and who were so. some of the um, your early influences what did you know I mean I'm you know I mean there's all sorts of people you heard but who really stuck out in your mind and you thought boy I'd like to play like that guy well I mean I don't know I mean the the earliest music that I can recall seriously getting into like even like as young as seven eight nine ten and there was a uh, uh, Johnny Cash and Marty Robbins my dad you know had that yeah. had that kind of music and a little hi-fi that he would play so uh, certainly Johnny Cash he had uh, the album was called the story songs of the trains and rivers on on the sun uh, uh -huh. on the sun uh -huh. label by Johnny Cash and it was I think it was a collection of singles probably but uh, um, that was the first album I played over and over and over and over. And this next song is a public service announcement. And we want you to do the moves with us. You can do it. Jesus. 
this fish for for making me blue? I'm asking myself, now what would Jesus do? Put down the mascara, turn off the cell phone, drive at least 20 in the 40 zone. And when you hate the hard left into the 7 11, you wouldn't leave your father crying up in heaven, no. You use your turn signal. Use your turn signal. Professor. Joe, comma, your Santa Barbara buddies are here, exclamation point. Ian, Mike, Eric, Steve, I can't read that, weed? And somebody else. Somebody's been drinking, because I can't tell what the hell that says. But thank you, I appreciate it. Drugged out, rave rat in a micro bus, shopping for glow sticks down at Toys R Us. Come on, Gus, use your turn signal. Use your turn signal. Now it's three lanes over to the donut shop, but it's the law, and you're a cop. Come on, use your turn signal. Use your turn signal. sign you want to go on to the next street and there's and there's like a baby walking through a crosswalk all by itself just imagine it what should you do the correct answer hell I don't know what the heck am I at professor I would say at the very least you should use your turn signal Clone in a hoopty Cadillac. Your bitches and your homies in the back. Think you're the Mac, but use your turn, use your signal. turn signal. Use your turn signal. Turn signal. There you go. She 
taught me the dance. How does it go? You should turn signal. Okay. You should turn signal. I don't know how to dance. That's why I started you playing turn music. Because I. You should turn signal. I'll just I'll just do this because that means stop. You should turn signal. 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 Thank you. Um, so, Joe, you have a lot of humor in your in your music. Where does that come from? I mean, you know, you're a, you're a hilarious guy, but when did you start thinking, I'm going to write some humorous stuff? You know, I I don't really know. The earliest songs that I ever wrote were funny songs. Uh, I mean, I think that's you know the the humorous stuff is maybe fifty percent of what I write, and you know the serious stuff is the other fifty. But the earliest things that I ever wrote were certainly kind of funny songs. You. Um... You said some of your earliest stuff was uh, listening to Johnny Cash. Right, right. Um, since then, who are the like your favorite guitar players? The people who you really, really feel influenced what you do. Right, uh, man. There's so many. I would uh, say, in no particular order, uh, uh, the people that have influenced me the most uh, in terms of guitar would be uh, Jerry Garcia. Billy Zoom from X, uh, Richard Thompson, uh, Chris Kirkwood from the Meat Puppets. Um, gosh, there's so many. I mean, those those right there are like like the main guys like that I just listened to over and over and over in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they're kind of from all over the map. You know, it's right? Like, yeah, and they it's, obviously are. And 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 it was funny in high school, you know, because things were so clicky. You know, like I had friends who were into the Grateful Dead and friends who were into punk. And I mean, my two favorite bands were the Grateful Dead and X, who probably... Were they ever, ever on a show together? I seriously <laughs> doubt it. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm... Yeah, I, all the people that listened to X and that kind of stuff in, in my high school wouldn't have been caught dead listening to the dead. <laughs> and all the people who listened to the dead just thought the punk stuff was noise. And I was like, oh, this stuff is both brilliant from these different right, directions right, right, you right, know right. And I let your cat pickle lick cream cheese off of my fingers your cat taco does the same it's a little game we play when you're away I let them do the things you tell them not to I'm gonna make them love me more than they love you I 
Thanks, Heather. So let's talk about your current lineup and okay. how did you, how did all these people come together? I'm sure you've been through, I wouldn't say a thousand bands, but you know, most musicians before they get to their own thing, right, the way right. where you are right now, they've you know been in lots and lots of bands. So how did how did you get your current lineup? You know, uh, it was kind of like maybe you'd call it a dream team like I've, I've played with a lot of people here I've, I've been in, in the Bay Area since 91 and I've you know I've played in a lot of bands with, with a lot of different people and these were just the people that I really wanted to play with when I got together um, uh, two years ago for that CD release show it was it was for a CD that I recorded right here uh, for the most part um, where I did m most of the instruments in this room by myself and just just through overdub uh, dubs so when it came time to record or to perform it well there's there's no actual band that really played on most of those you tracks. sang all the parts i as far as i recall i sang all all the harmonies i, I think my friend val like may have sung one or two harmonies uh -huh. on that album and my friend jason played fiddle on a few cuts and uh John Haynes played drums on a couple of oh, cuts. Oh, he's a great drummer. Yeah, and uh, Will Hendricks played bass on a couple of cuts. Other than that, I did all the drums, all the bass, all the all the harmonies, everything. So it came time for the show, and it's like, well, how do I actually perform this? Do I go out there like with an acoustic guitar and say, just imagine harmonies in your head? Or do I try to pull some people together to uh, do this stuff live? And I just kind of looked at all the people I'd played with and said, hey, here's who I would... Like, if I could pick who I wanted to play with me... You know, I was like, I want uh, John Haynes on drums. I want Dave Jess on bass. I want Steve Lucky on keys. I want Danny Allen on guitar. I want Jason Kleinberg on fiddle. I want Val Esway and Heather Davison on vocals. You know, like it was just uh, uh, like, here's who I want to do this with. Like, these are the people that I love. I love what they do. I love playing with them. And then, you know, we had other guests, you know, uh, come and sit in. Uh, yeah, it was Joe like the Goldmark dream team. On pedal st I mean, Joe Goldmark on pedal steel. Come on. You know, that's uh uh lucio manigan uh who i've been in a couple of bands with came and played some guitar in a few songs uh jeff hobbs came and played saxophone <laughs> on the toilet lid. do see, do see, do how you function, I don't know, but I'm too old for this running round. Give me a call when you come back down. I took Dosey to the store, turned my back for just a second. She sucked all of the nitrous out of the whipped cream cans in the dairy section. do see, do see, do Normal and she gets pulled over. Do see, do see, do how you function? I don't know, but I'm too old for this running round. Give me a call when you come back down. Do see gobbles, psilocybin, mescaline, and LSD. But her body is a temple. She doesn't eat red meat. Do see, do see, do how you function? I don't know, but I'm too old for this running round. Give me a call when you come back down. I took do see down to Yoshi to see a famous old jazz band. She stood up between each song and yelled.
she checked into Betty Ford. Now her dosing days are done. She don't go sober and she ain't no fun. Do -si, do -si, do how you function? I don't know. everybody the show that just happened a couple of weeks ago you have a robot that yeah. uh that was the hilarious he's probably right oh yeah he's uh, right behind us there's a chatbot right, right there. there hi buddy and 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 you actually saw i don't, I don't know how you did it I, I guess you just made some uh a tape or something that went along but you knew the magic whole, the whole the whole piece and it, you're saying, oh, he's all broken and everything, and then all of a sudden he comes to life, and then he starts like telling you off. Well, we everything. did a faith healing of him, actually. <laughs> like, I didn't bring him back to life. The love in the room brought him back right, to life. Right, right. So, the love brought him back to life. Yeah, that's how you heal a broken robot is with love. And so. and then at the very end, and and you had part of the the gag was that you had said, oh, he had been broken because he had been too wasted at a previous show and fallen off the yeah. stage. Yeah. Well, he's got a WD forty habit that he, right. you know, he tends to imbibe in excess of uh, And then the love brought him back. Proper parameters. The love brought him back, and then he started getting on your case. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got an attitude, you know. <laughs> and then at the end of that part, I don't know if I should give away your bits, but then you threw him off the stage, and people were like, Joe, how could you do that? Yeah, yeah. I felt the entire room turn against me at that point, which is kind of what I was going for, you know. Oh, it's it was, like, it's it was just hilarious. Like, yeah. You can uh, always you can always be be sure that it's going to be a good show uh, when, when, <laughs> when when you're up on stage and you have a lot of people. Yeah, uh, people act, uh, like we're actually booing at that point. They were boo! Don't pick on the robot. He's just a little guy. You bully, and that was kind oh. of funny. Drink more water Wear clean socks And don't forget to call your mother Hi mom Always say thank you and please Don't confuse the forest with the trees Don't get between a cracker and his cheese And always lift with your knees Always lift with your knees Always lift with your knees Hey, you don't want to blow a gasket, brother And smell a rose Never lick a flagpole When the flagpole's froze Never bite off more than you can chew Hey man, don't, don't tell me what to do It's only a suggestion Please Always live with your knees Always live with your knees Always live with your knees Hey, you don't want to blow a gasket, brother
shows are incredible. You always have some pieces in there that um, are just hilarious. And sometimes the people in the audience don't get it. As a matter of fact, when I went to the show in 2010 at the Great American Music Hall, I didn't get the part. There's a, you, you have a song called Control Freak, yeah. which I, is, I guess sometimes is your closing song because it's, it's kind of hard to... Sometimes it's my opening song. <laughs> really? And I do that just to piss people off. It's like, oh, that should be the encore. Now we're going to open with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it really is. It's kind of, it's, <laughs> it's really best suited to kind of be the, the last song because everyone's going off stage and things, things like that. But there's a part in there where the, the microphone starts slowly uh, falling down. You get start getting lower and yeah. lower and lower. And then there's people from the audience who are trying to help you out by right. uh, by making sure, you know, by fixing it so that you don't have to do that. And then I talked to you about it later and you said, oh, uh, I, I had someone build that for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, what, what happened was at, at one show, I had a mic stand that would not stay up. And it was a problem all throughout the show. And then we were playing Control Freak and it seriously just the mic stand was going down about that fast and I'm trying to sing into it and just getting lower and lower. And I just thought it was the most hilarious thing that I could have possibly done because I'm singing this song about being a control freak and wanting to be in control of everything and the mic stand won't even stay up. And I just thought that was beautiful. And so, uh, uh, yeah, like at that show two years ago at the Great American, I asked my friend Zach, as a matter of fact, that's the mic stand uh, <laughs> sitting right over there. It's got a servo motor in it, and at the appropriate time, he can hit a button, and the mic stand will start doing that. Because I was like, well, how can we, you know, it's too hard to set it so that it's going to actually do that. So he actually built me a mic stand for people who had never seen that before. And yeah, it, it was hilarious because there were a, at least three people from the audience who were trying to do me a favor and would go up and try to like fix the stand for me. So I'm like fighting them off. Right, right, like, right. Like, no, no, it's part of the bit. It's part of the bit. Just leave it, you know? And so they're trying to fix it for me. And the whole thing just became kind of this, uh, I don't know, this meta it's analysis that, that, of that, control freakery. That's freak such a great, great song. You know? Everybody, by the, by the end of the song, everyone's left the stage. We're going to do a song. <laughs> I saw you in for 
Now somewhere in my dream last night I got into a fight with Bruce Lee He ripped my heart clean from my chest And handed it still pumping to me And as I was falling down He was looking at it with a puzzled frown Right through the middle from the top on down There stuck a tiny arrow Tiny arrow, tiny arrow So sad that we had to Do you have any, you know, advice or something that you think would help out a, a young aspiring artist who maybe thinks so? Oh, uh, I mean, could be music, could be right. art, because I, I know you're you're a, an artist beyond just being a musician. So, um, is there any advice, anything you learned, or just like grin and bear it? Uh, <laughs> yes, if you want to be as successful as I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say, uh, gosh, I mean, just do what you're going to do and don't, you know, don't fall prey to other people's expectations of uh, what you're doing. You know, do it because you truly feel something that you want to express. And uh, I mean, I'm going to be doing this until the day I die. Uh, I've, you know, I've never made a dime out of this entire operation. Everything... I make goes right back into creating more music but you have quite a following and, that's for sure um oh yeah and and, and you know i mean th there's money taken in but it all goes right back into the next project yeah uh, you know so it's like you know i would honestly say you know uh <laughs> the old standby don't quit your day job is is probably a pretty good yeah, thing yeah. because you know um, there are so many artists out there, and the reality, it, it's kind of like uh, trying to be a, a basketball player. Right, right. I mean, the truth of the matter is, is if, if you're a creative person, you are always, at any point, going to have more projects that you want to do than you have money for. And, you know, I mean, everybody I know that, you know, is making music or art or, you know, they've all got notebooks full of things. I have notebooks full of projects that I'm never going to do that one, but I'm going to write it down. You know, like if, if I ever win the lottery, that one will go back onto the, onto the maybe list, right, right, you know, right. but I mean, so yeah, I mean, you know, I would say, uh, uh, you know, definitely stick to what you're doing. Just be true to like your own vision and, you know, find some way to fund, you know, like what you're doing. If you, uh, if you happen to, uh, be blessed with a trust fund, good for you, you know, if I can use that thing and, uh, you know, and make some art. But it, if, like most of us, you weren't blessed with a trust fund, just, you know, find some way to fund what you're doing. <laughs>
to be frustrated with you when I'm really just frustrated with your mother. If you promise to take things out on me over something that your daddy done, let's get together and treat each other bad. Compare each other to the other lovers that we had. I'll keep looking for my floozy, you look for your sugar dad. Thank the Lord that our days are numbered. Inspirational uh, words. <laughs> well, Joe. I hope they were inspirational to somebody. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Oh, I should say, Joe Rutt, if you ever get a chance to go see one of his shows, I'll guarantee you it's worth your money. It's worth more than the money that you'll pay to get there. What he said. <laughs>
Just close your eyes You're swinging on a vine Back in sweet home Alabama the pain. 